Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you are having a fabulous day. Thanks for joining me and today I wanted to have a look at Australia and just uh, you know, questioning the history and the, the narrative that we're given for Australia and the basically the colonisation of Australia. So the picture you can see on the screen here, it's actually a government house in Sydney. And it was built between 1837 and 1842, five years to build this. And that was, what, less than 50 years after Australia was founded. You know, the, the first boat just sort of rocked up. Within 50 years, they were building this. Okay, so questioning Australia's history, let's jump into it. Okay, so this is a map uh, by Cornelius, uh, 1500s, publication date 1597, by Wycliffe, is it Wycliffe? Cornelius. And this map is interesting because here we have this landmass called Terra Australis. Now, obviously, uh, Terra Australis is what? just means the land down, you know, the southern land. And that's uh, what they were looking for when they discovered Australia, you know, discovered. Um, and so this has got a landmass here, which as you can see, this is the circle, the Antarctic Circle. And terra incognita, the unknown land in the middle there of the landmass. Now if we come out here... I'm not really sure. Africa, that looks like Africa. The Tropic of Cancer, then we have some islands. Jarvis, that, that'd be Indonesia. New Guinea. But no Australia, you see Australia would would be there underneath New Guinea. And this, this kind of has the shape of Australia. You know, kind of, and it's got this big sort of landmass there. So that's an interesting map. Something else to look at here is this date, I-597. And if we look, see that over here. Okay, so see this C Salado. I mean, that's as far as I can zoom in, but you can see this has got the tags with the I on it, just like they've done over here. This one as well, it's a bit harder to see, and they, they are dotted. But there we go. I-597 in the year of, and this year, Australia seems to be connected to, you know, this other big landmass. I'm not sure what this is. That's, we're not told that's there anymore. And the unknown land. This one, uh, what day is this? This is, oh, da, da, da. May 1657, but they're not sure. Now this has the same thing. It has Australia's, well this one has Australis incognita. Incognita, and this is later. This is, um, what, a hundred years or so later? And it's got, see this land? We've got sort of these edges around here, but there's no, no longer a landmass covering the, um, you know, terra incognito, the unknown land. But if we come out here, what we find is New Holland. And this is Van Diemen's Land, which is Tasmania now. New Holland is Australia. So this has got Australia way back here suddenly when the other map, you know, it was, Australia was sort of right there. And a lot bigger, I don't know, so interesting. Just found that interesting. Uh, this one as well. We come down and have a look at some of these dates. You'll see there J628. Are they J644? J in the year of uh, Jesus. So the year 644. Now, uh, so Australia was founded. European settlement in Australia began 1788 when the British established the Crown 
colony of New South Wales, the Corona Colony, um, with the first settlement at Port Jackson. So 1788 was literally when the first boat turned up. And it was January 26, is that correct? Pretty sure that's right, January 26, 1788, uh, the first boat turned up. And that was it, just the boat and with, with everything they could carry on board. So just keep that in mind, we're still a new country. Uh, this is a book from 1870s, I believe, called Australian Scenery and Aboriginals. So this one, yeah, uh, publication date 1875 to 1890. And it's basically just pictures uh, of Australia and the Australian bush. And this is really the narrative that we're given of Australia. It's this narrative of, you know, the bushman, you know, the jolly swagman with his tucker bag, you know, out in the Australian bush, drovers, all this kind of stuff. And so that's a very typical scene, you know, in, in Australian sort of, uh, historical art, I guess you'd call it. You know, a lone guy sitting out in the bush. Now this is some pictures of Aboriginals, and as you can clearly see, I mean, th th this is a painting. They're not. This is th this is a set. This is a complete setup. This photo. You know, you've got this one standing up in, you know, an animal skin, holding a little wooden club. This guy's not interested at all. He's wearing pants, funny enough. Uh, and there's a fishing net. Over here we have another one. These, this guy's really not happy about it. He's an elder. This, you know, they've got, I mean, their sort of skins and stuff. You can see this is all tribal scarring by the looks of it across their chests. And again, just holding sticks now, uh, uh, completely set up. This is a painting in the background, and they're just sitting. You know, it's like one of those displays you used to see at museums back in the 70s and 80s, you know, where they used to just put, you know, Neanderthal man or something in front of a scene. And this is exactly what it is, just completely made up. Now, the, the question is, I guess, why? If they had photography, why wouldn't they be going out and capturing ac actual accurate photos of the way they lived uh, rather than setting it up. This lady, you know, got this nice headdress and everything. She actually, you know, looks like a very sort of proud woman. This guy doesn't look happy. But it's just completely set up and fake. And the question is, why? I mean, is this because this is how they changed people's opinions of the Aboriginals? You know, did they dress them up? Did they change? This is this how they reset them and their history, telling them, you know, taking on, because again, this lady's got these, these sort of clothes on, material clothes, this guy's not happy, but holding just a stick. But look, these are well-made pants. And this one over here, they've got their, it has this wooden hut here, this sort of A-frame wooden hut, but here it's got material, a piece of material hanging on it. And the story definitely doesn't say that Aboriginals had material of any kind. It, it pretty much said skins, like we saw in the last picture, but again, these guys are wearing material clothes. I mean, is that a skirt? They look pretty worn, you know, but is this actually their, their original clothing? It's just been, you know, they've had everything taken off them and they're sort of, that, that's how it looks now because they can't look after themselves properly and they're being overrun. I don't know. Because the thing is, these are, these are definitely fake photos. It's a setup. And we see this all the time. And I think, you know, in the current situation, we're starting to really see how the mainstream media really can just tell outright lies and show pictures that are outright lies and give you a, a narrative that is just an outright lie. And people believe it en masse. It's, it's, as long as they keep hammering the point, people believe it. So, you know, the question is, did, did you know, white man come in and find something? You know, a civilization with all these buildings already built and then they just decided to destroy basically 
the natives and dress them up and make all these photos that were, that were just all set up and show people, no, this is what the natives are really like. They're just savages in, you know, with sticks in animal skins when they may have had a much, much higher culture. And I think we also know that, you know, you can wipe that culture out pretty quickly if you do things like this. Um, just change the narrative and in a generation you can have it gone. You just wipe out all the elders, tell the, you know, take the children away from their parents, tell them a different story, destroy all their, their, their sort of uh, social cohesiveness and yeah this is what happens and this is what still happens okay and this is a picture of a house in 18 uh, what was it 18 sort of 80 ish here's a guy at the front who's just built it and as you can see this is a wooden house not much to it very basic even the roof is bark and he's had to put branches on to hold the bark down all the fencing is just limbs of trees, just branches and things. You can see he's, you know, a few trees out here have been cut down. He's even got an axe with him down here under his foot. This is what, what he could build in the 1870s, 1880s. But they are asking us to believe that 40 years prior to this, they were building huge brick stone buildings with convict labour. Now this guy doesn't look to be a convict, maybe he's, you know, was a convict and is no longer, I'm not sure, but this is the skill level, guys. And this is also the resources, this is what you would expect. Not this. Okay, this was apparently built, the story says, this was built 40 years before this. Alright, sorry, uh... Cat was meowing, she has decided to join us. Say hello. Hello. Alright, uh, so yeah, so this was built 1870s and yeah, the government house was built 1837 they started to 1843. The narrative says that uh, Captain Cook landed Botany Bay in 1788 which was, what's that, basically 50 years, 49 years before they started construction of this with convict labour. And again, the question is, you know, where did they get all the brick? Where did they get all the glass? Where did they get all the metal? And then, of course, where did they get the tradesmen who designed it? Where did they get, you know, the artisans to, to finish it? And this is just the outside as well, remember. This is another picture I found. This is... I think it says 1845. So this is basically just after it had finished construction. Nice flag there. And at the, also remember that uh, Australia didn't become a federation or a commonwealth until 1901. So this is way, this is when we're still a British colony. They're building things like this. And there's nothing else around, as you can see. No, not even any roads, just nothing. Uh, but they built this somehow. And, you know, they didn't just build a building that they needed that would, you know, suffice, you know, then serve their needs. They just built this, a castle. Just, you know, kind of silliness really, isn't it? And here's a few more shots of it. As you can see, it's, it's literally, it's a castle. Look at this place. Look at these windows. They're like cathedral windows in it. You know, got towers coming off it, this huge big tower at the back. And this is the inside, guys, and of course it's the same old story. You know, whoever was designing these ceilings had a lot of work going on, because look at them, they're all the same. Okay, we've got these, you know, these sort of curved ceilings. I mean, look at this. This is, they love sort of putting all these different angles and curves in. We've got the pillars here, obviously. All the finishings that, that we normally get, and just grand, grand in scale. Uh, this is <laughs> a room. I think I've actually shown this picture before in another video, but I mean, look at the size of this thing. Look at the scale it's built on. Now, back in the day when this is one of the first buildings that they built, 
the new colony. So the story says, why would you wait? I mean, you could get three floors in there. Why would you waste all the material, all the time, all the money, all the excess to build something this big? Just does not make any sense at all, at all, at all. It's just silly. You know, this story we're given is just ridiculous. It's only a small picture, but you can see, you know, look at all the glasswork. You know, that's like a cathedral. And <laughs> what is this? A theatre. Because that's what you need in Government House. You need a theatre. Oh, so this is it. Government House. Blah, blah, blah. Built in the 1840s, but 40 years later, they're building this. And just to show you a few more, guys, these are the kinds of houses that you would expect in a new colony. You know, when your resources are things like wood, trees, you know, you would have wooden buildings. You know, again, the bark roofs, the wooden buildings. Uh, that's a brick building, but it's very small. You know, that may have been doable with mud brick. As you can see, there's nothing around it, mud roads and everything. Wood. Again, here, an old one, little shack, bark roof. It looks like you might have... Sorry, I'm patting my cat if you can hear the purring. Um, it looks like you might have a stone chimney here. But these things, you know, these big brick buildings, where did they come from? Again, this is what you would expect. Stuff like this, bark roofs. And this is what they were building, this is what they were living in, in the 1800s. And in the 1880s, they were still building this kind of stuff. Right, but what were they? What was happening in the cities? Well, this place is called Susanna Place, and it was opened or built. Built, they say, eighteen thirty-six. The, well, the site was granted to someone to be built on in eighteen thirty-six, and they built this, uh, which is Susanna Place. So, if we come back here, uh, okay. So, this photo here. Okay, so this was one of the first buildings to be built in Sydney, and it was built as houses, they tell us. Uh, notice the red brick, by the way. Why would you build an entrance like this and build this funny shape? I mean, they, they would not have been short on land. Like, why, why would you do this? It doesn't make sense at all. You would build it square. That that just makes it harder. So that's, that's you know. Uh, look at this building. It's a mud flutter. You can see the street level here, and this is clearly lower, and it gets goes down at the back. Uh, this is just an inside view that when they were doing it up. And here you go again, below the road level. Red brick that's been covered. Old shop. This is the back of it, so you can see there's another full story at the back. Again, the sunken bit, so it's back in the 70s, I think. And there's a few more. So this is it. Now, this photo here, this, I uh, don't have a date on it. But look at this. I mean, now clearly this is the 1800s. I don't know, 1880s maybe. You know, most photos we get seem to be the 1880s, the early ones. But photography was around since the 1830s. So let's say out in eighties maybe, um, but look, look look at how old this looks already. It just looks in a state of disrepair. There's bits of you know plaster falling off onto the ground. There's just rubbish around that looks like it's debris off the building. There's dirt roads. One person walking across the road. No one else is there, and just old world brick buildings. Again, built. Um, what did it say? 1837, was it? And at the same time, you know, all that anyone else could build was these wooden shacks. But these guys were building brick buildings. So yeah, 1844, and it only took one year for them to build this. Uh, remember, the colony was less than 50 years old. And they were building these big, it's a set of uh, 
sort of four or so apartments. It's actually quite big, as you can see in this. We've got these all three or four, four apartments there and this building here. Built in a year, less than 50 years after the first boat landed in Australia. And of course, it's red brick. So it doesn't really make sense, does it, guys? When, you know, this is what they're telling us. All the cities, and of course, we do have some country towns in Australia that are, have these old world buildings built out. But the reality is that people were living in things like this. This is what they were building. This is the skill level. This is, you know, the industry level as far as, you know, they didn't have all these brick makers. They just didn't. They didn't have glass makers that were making panelled glass. They didn't. And if they didn't have that, why would you be building this 1840? That, you know, if you look in a glass, it says there's no, they, they couldn't make the panels. So why were they building these windows? Or what, are they trying to tell us that this was retrofitted after they could make the panels or something? Well, what was there before? You know, there's no story about that. This is all original. So what about the glass? You know, this just doesn't make sense. So that's it, guys. Just wanted to go over a few things with Australia. Uh, I'll delve into this a bit more. So I hope you enjoyed that one. A look at Australia and how the history that we're given just does not add up. So thank you for spending some time with me. Hope you have an amazing day and I shall catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.